Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look and a sneak peek at an upcoming World War II turn-based war game uh, that is Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom. Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom is, I believe, the fourth game in the Strategic Mind series, uh, which in many ways are kind of like Panzer General clones or modern remakes of the Panzer General style. You have a campaign with a series of linked battles that are predefined, but sometimes you have branching options. You have a core force of units that you carry over from battle to battle, and you can upgrade their equipment, gain experience, lose experience if you have to replace you know, experienced troops with green troops, and you have to overcome very, various challenges as you fight through historical scenarios. The game is a... Uh, look at the Western Allies campaigns in World War II. So the British campaign looks at the British side of the war, starting with uh, the Saar Offensive in 1939, right after the declaration of war. And the American campaign focuses on Dwight D. Eisenhower and the American efforts in World War II. So that starts a little bit later. Uh, this is a game that also, I think, sort of one of its really unique calling cards is these 3D cinematics that occur between battles where you've got kind of 3D dialogue between different historical figures and generals. Very ahistorical in the types of things they talk about and their points of view. I don't think it's very based in history, but it's entertaining. The voice acting isn't great, admittedly, but it's almost like kind of that... I don't know if it's so bad it's funny scenario um, because in playing this, you know, the other night on Twitch, I don't think it was that bad. But like some of them in the past have been kind of bad, like Stalin and whatnot. I think they go through the same voiceover company. So like all of the characters are kind of samey and repetitive in terms of their sound. I would love to have a chance to be like a minor player in there. I would do it for free if I could just be like, give me 20 lines, one guy who doesn't come back in any of the other battles. It would just be awesome to do. It would be really kind of a cool thing to do. But I digress. This is Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom. This is a sneak peek. The game comes out on May 21st. It's by Starney Games. And this is taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel last night. And apparently they've already announced the following game, the successor, which will be Strategic Mind Spirit of Liberty, which I guess puts you in the shoes of the Finns during World War II. Um looks like you command Finnish forces through the Winter War, the Continuation War, and the Lapland War. Save your country's very existence from the Red Menace, Niet Molotov. So that'll be interesting. That'll uh, definitely be a different sort of scale of a game. With that being said, tonight we are playing Strategic Mind uh, Fight for Freedom, and this is going to be the Western Allied fight during World War II. Now, when we jump in here to the new game the options, there are two options the here. Uh, there is a British campaign and an American and campaign. The British campaign, you're role-playing as um, Harold Alexander, I believe it is. And, and the American campaign, you're role-playing as Dwight D. Eisenhower. So I'm assuming the British campaign starts a little bit earlier, probably in the desert. Let's see, the best diplomatic ever, blah, blah, blah. Polish territory is invaded by German army. It's time for the United Kingdom. So maybe you actually get to fight in France. More conquests. Poland was invaded huh. by the German army, and it is time for the United Kingdom to declare war on Germany. Time for this world-class voice acting? Hell yeah. No solidarity in the ruling bodies. You know what? We get to, let's go ahead and play the British campaign because the war starts a little bit earlier. I think the American campaign, probably to compensate for starting the war much later, has a bunch of alternate World War III scenarios against the Soviets at the end of the game. Um, but we're going to play as the British here. You will take the role of Sir Harold Alexander, an experienced and talented British commander. Blue Hat Your Magician, thanks for the follow. All right, so we're going to go with the reason, the I guess. There's difficulty victory. selection. Storytelling is However, mostly just like, hey, let's go through here. His Majesty King George VI, oh my God, that's a lot of... Minister Winston Churchill and the British people have put their trust... Yeah, we'll just go with reasonable, which I think is like normal difficulty. let them down. Oh no! German tanks! Did they have any Panzer IVs crossing the border on September 1st, 1939? Those are Panzer IVs, right? Those are PZ-3s. 
That's a far more modern looking German so force. For efforts to appease Hitler. It took those dreamers of the parliament long enough to realize dictators only understand overwhelming power. Well, my troops are ready and eager to drive the Germans back into Germany. I wish the French were also ready. I've seen their frontline troops. They're more rabble than an army. Still, we have more than enough forces That's to throw me. the Germans back into their barracks before Poland is overrun. The Siegfried Line won't stop us. It's both unfinished and undermanned. Our politicians disagree. They declared war on Germany, but it seems like they expect Hitler to back off because of some harsh words. I take it Prime Minister Chamberlain won't authorize an offensive operation? He won't. I will get him to come This feels a little bit ahistorical. I don't think the British were chomping at the bit to invade Germany. How much more time does he want? If the French and the British don't strike now, Poland is doomed. Along with their hopes of resolving this war quickly. I'm telling you, the French are not ready to strike. And I won't risk our expeditionary force all by itself. If the French aren't ready now, they won't be any more ready in a year. They learn to fight once they get into action. We must strike now when the German defenses are weak. That is true. But I won't waste my men's lives. Brooke is right. We need a clear plan. Finally, a measured opinion. The situation is anything but clear. Gentlemen, any ideas on how we tackle this operation? So our foe is going to be the cautious Monty. Very interesting uh, start to the game's narrative, I think. General Alexander, Prime Minister Chamberlain was against our involvement. In Let me know if you guys can hear me okay over the uh, voiceover. Him, this would show our solidarity with the French in our willingness to take decisive action. Nonetheless, keep in mind that this is chiefly a French affair. Avoid pointless heroics and try to keep our troops unharmed. Your main task here will be to capture a lodgment for a continued offensive. <laughs> we get a little crown a little border. symbol here? That's and interesting. City of Hornbach. Understood, sir. We'll begin immediately. General Alexander, our forge units report numerous minefields around enemy positions. Really? Okay, okay I didn't know that, Nowhere Man. Weren't. Tell the field commanders to keep their eyes peeled and send the suppers in if there's so much as a whiff of a mine ahead. We need those minefields cleared before we start maneuvering. Okay, so this is going to be kind of the tutorial mission, presumably. So you can see up here, the, the one criticism I would have, uh, maybe not the only criticism, but the primary criticism I have with these games is these maps, I think they're trying to look good, but they, the, the units don't stand out well. Like everything's so samey, it's really hard to tell. Like I didn't even know there was infantry here till I hovered over it. So that's, you know, uh, a little bit odd. Um, like, yeah, it's just really difficult to follow. Apparently there's some French troops over here, which I don't think I can command. But it looks like our objectives here are to capture the border settlements. This is the SAR offensive. So we need to attack, attack and conquer this objective here and this objective up here to the north. Um, it also looks like there's additional objectives. Looks like there's a depot here, the Burford Airfield, and then Rubenheim. Uh, as well as a couple of other objectives further to the west. So actually quite a few objectives that we need to take. Um, it also says our secondary objectives avoid high losses, uh, basically lose fewer than three men and then or units and then minefields uh, demined. De de we need to demine five minefields. There's two that have been identified over here. I'm not sure if we know where the other ones are. Looks like we've just identified two of them. All right. So is this is this a sapper unit? Both core and non-core units. Core units. Yep. So it's going to work the same way that that uh, Panzer General does in the sense that you have core and non-core units. Core missions are allocated for one mission only, while the core units will accompany you throughout the campaign. So non-core basically are cannon fodder and use them as you need. Core units uh, carry with them. You carry them forward from battle to battle. Although I don't see anywhere down here where it indicates what a core unit is and what a core unit isn't. Does it tell me that anywhere? You can get info here by clicking on these guys. Circle versus square. On the icon? Where the hell's on the icon? I don't see any circles. Ammunition and fuel icons next to unit strength will allow you to quickly get important information about it. 
If the unit is still able to move during the current turn, the canister to icon will be green. If it can no longer move, oh, the number the in the background here. Gray. So they're all core Likewise, units. All right, got it. So you can see we start off here with a Daimler Dango Crusader tank, a 40 millimeter Bofors, a 75 millimeter artillery piece, and one regular infantry unit, as well as a Hurricane fighter and a Bristol Blenheim two engine bomber. Let's go bomb, bomb, bomb the town here. So it looks like, it, so you can see here when you hover over an enemy, you get some information in the top right. The Bristol Blenheim has a plus 12 soft attack. Um, and then the regular troops here, plus six air defense, plus four taking cover, plus two spotting, plus two city, plus four range defense mod. 18 total defense versus 12 total attack. Um, but it, it's, so it's giving me actually question marks on the presumed attack, which maybe is a bad idea. Maybe I shouldn't bomb those guys. I don't know if there's anywhere else that I can do a better job of attacking. Maybe we can move our infantry up here. Enemy positions after the artillery and air bombardment. It is also the best unit for storming cities, mountains, forests, and well-entrenched positions. Well so you can also see infantry can move in trucks or on foot. You can see here these icons with truck icons mean if I try to move up here, these guys are going to mount up and jump in their trucks, which makes them more vulnerable to enemy counterattacks. The other units here indicate that they will just move on foot because there's no truck here. So I'm going to move these guys adjacent to the town. Heavy equipment. Units with heavy equipment cannot move if they do not have ground transport. Additionally, they cannot board air transport and can only... So we do have enemy infantry here. At a seaport. Where's our artillery again? Over here? Can I bombard these guys? Not quite. My artillery can't really move into range. You can see, I assume this range is this red outline here for the artillery. An anti-aircraft unit is a powerful and versatile weapon. Its main purpose is to protect... Move our anti-aircraft unit forward one. You can see it's red is its coverage. So I'm assuming it'll defend the these infantry here to, against enemy counterattack. Large caliber anti-aircraft artillery is a good weapon for destroying enemy tanks. Move our Daimlers up here to the left. You can see the camera angle just changed and you can watch these guys move around here on the map. So the infantry, these guys must be like, this must be a recon vehicle. It is, it does say recon down here. And offensive, since it provides you with full intelligence information regarding the presence of enemy forces. Thus making your so actually that gives me more information about my bombing attack. It does say two German to zero British losses, I think. So let's try and bomb here and see what happens here. It's a zero to two. So I'm gonna fly my Bristol Blenheim bombers over the town here and bomb it. So you can see we did do damage to the town. We didn't lose any damage ourselves. It doesn't look like they had any, any aircraft fire. We're going to go ahead and move our hurricanes up here as well. We're going to strafe these Germans in the towns. And then again, by the fact that they are adjacent to these bombers, they should be able to provide some cover to the enemy or to our troops in the event that, or to our bombers in the event that the, the Germans do attack. Let's move our armor up adjacent to the town. Let's see if we can attack here. Less damage against them is split. Uh, two to three for the armor attack. Infantry gets a one to four, so I'm going to do that. HP cannot be restored in any way during the operation. And then our armor, I think, will finish these guys off. We get an overrun, which means our armor can move again. So move into the town. We'll take that. General Alexander, I am sending you more reinforcements. Oh, nice. So we get a, a new unit for taking this objective. Among others. So we get some Matilda 2s. And no enemy weapon will pierce their armor. And we also get some additional artillery and some additional infantry. That a shipment of machine guns has just been transferred to a warehouse in Walsheim. I believe a small detour is now in order. According to the plan, Walsheim is Thanks for the resub there, they gone. 14 months. But then if we're in a position to get there first, what's the harm? One cannot tell these German names from each other. Mistakes are bound to be made. <laughs> One can't tell these German names from each other? You act like you haven't fought these guys before. Oh, I don't know what the name of these these towns are. They're all the same. All right, so we have another secondary objective here, which is to take Valsheim before the French over here on the left. I believe these little white boxes also represent supply Tanks for what it's worth. For rapid offensive and open train. However, they are vulnerable in close quarters to the infantry units in difficult terrain. We're going to move our Such armor cities, up over this mountains, bridge. Forest, swamps, shallows, and well-entrenched infantry units. 
we'll move our armor on the secondary town here. It also does get us closer to some of the other objectives up here in the north. So it does serve a purpose. We also did detect an enemy minefield. Nice. So we demined that. So that gives us one of five fields demined. Of each hexagon while the unit is selected. Which units run out of ammo? My unit? My unit should still have plenty of ammo. Anti-tank artillery is effective against tanks and other hard targets. Your best tactic when using anti-tank artillery is to position it next to your other forces to provide them with fire support versus attacks from enemy tanks. Alright, we've got some artillery also, which I'm going to move forward here to support the drive on this German town. We'll move it in vehicles and we'll move it into this town. Presumably, hopefully there's no enemy troops in this town. There's not. All right, we've also got this recon vehicle, which we're going to swing up to the north. Northeast, I guess. Oh, the tanks have the option to bombard the enemy towns without return fire. Yeah, it does look like our tank actually does have this option here. We get a zero to one. So we inflict some casualties on the enemy there. This is a supply hub. Artillery is the basis of the firepower of your forces. It can weaken enemy fortifications to allow your troops to attack without heavy losses. I don't want to move my artillery up ahead of my infantry because that'll be kind of vulnerable to enemy attack. Within its range. However, its main strength is its long firing range, which allows you to... All right, I don't need to hear all those updates. So we captured one of the two border settlements. It looks like the other one is over here on the right. I assume these other yellow icons were, were other border defenses, but it doesn't look like that is in fact the case. I'm not sure what their significance is unless they're like secondary objectives. Also move this infantry up here. I'm gonna put them in trucks, which makes me a little bit nervous. We're gonna go at the town here. I'm assuming the French won't get to it in the next turn. I think I can probably take it next turn. Tactical bombers are flying artillery and it. Um. All right. So those guys have moved. We could buy more units. So we can go into the prestige section here and acquire more units. We already have a fair amount of armor. I kind of wouldn't mind getting some extra regular infantry. Mm. So let's acquire some units. Let's acquire some infantry. And then maybe we've got two artillery, three armor, I guess two artillery, two armor. No, we've got three armor, but I guess one of them must, some of them must not be core units. Uh, these guys aren't core here with the, the yellow name here, but we've got two armor units that are core, one recon unit. Um, both, one of the artilleries is core, one is not. The infantry that we got as reinforcements is also not a core unit. Do I have to wait to deploy the troops I just bought? Ah, yes, look at that lovely British unit. No, Bauhan, to me, I would, I would, unity of command is very different. All right, so our new units are down here in the reserve section. Go ahead and deploy them. They can't move the same turn you deploy either. All right. All right, let's end this first turn. You can see the units got new supply. Our French allies have launched a sudden attack. 
These units with the heavy armor skill cannot be damaged by ground or naval units with less than 10 base heart attack. Bonus looks like enemy fighters strafed our tanks and did no damage or a very... Looks like actually they lost units. Gotta love that French fighter force here. Ripping up some German bombers by the looks of it. Those look like they're Stukas that the French Air Force is gonna shoot down, I assume. Yeah, they destroyed a, a German Stuka unit. Go French! They're gonna attack this border town here, presumably break through, but I don't think they're gonna get to that secondary objective before me. So we'll get to have those bragging rights on the French. I'm sure they'll overrun this German unit here. We can click to accelerate the combat, by the way. So they do get the overrun. Can't really tell where all this stuff's going on right now. What's the best voice line so far, Sean Mack? I didn't... All right, can we just fast forward through these French movement? All right, so it's the SAR offensive. The French have taken the objective over here to the left. Volsheim they have not gotten to though here. So actually they took this town here, but they haven't gotten here yet. We're gonna bombard. But I'm gonna go ahead and fly my Bristol Blenheims here and bombard them with air units. Bring my Hawker Hurricane. Uh, bring my Hawker Hurricanes up here to engage the enemy fighters. Does say three to three. We're gonna lose a fair amount of losses. So let's actually hold off on attacking. We'll just use our fighters as a guard for the bombers. Naval and aircraft units cannot gain entrenchment. Each attack against an entrenched unit. This is a core unit, so I'm gonna move. Or not a core unit. It's a. Uh, actually, let's do this. It says zero to four. So we'll go ahead and attack with our infantry, which is also not a core unit, I guess. So gaining the experience here doesn't really help. The enemy troops surrender. We'll advance with our core armor here and take the town that we're supposed to take. And there you go. Valsheim is ours, General Alexander. You should have seen the faces of the French officers when they saw a Union Jack flying over the town hall. And we found those German machine guns. No match for our Vickers, but not bad either. We're allies, of course. But it's always a pleasure to show the Frenchies who's the best at waging war. Okay. We're allies, of course, but screw those French, am I right? Alright, let's move our Crusader A-12s up this roadway here. Go demine that roadway. So we lose... Looks like they were easy targets. They lose a little bit, but we did demine Avoid another hex. All right, so there's behind. an artillery unit here on this other border town that fired counter battery fire against my armor. I should have moved my scout up. So there's a German unit here to the west anti-aircraft up here. My infantry. I need to bring some artillery support up that way too. Don't I have another artillery piece back here somewhere? Yeah, over here. All right. Is that going to be in range? I don't even know anymore. All right, these Bofors can move here and I don't think I bought these infantry trucks so they're kind of short legged they gotta leg it out all right we'll move our artillery forward here I, I just don't know where the other minefields are because that's how their objective is to destroy three more enemy minefields I mean presumably we might want to go toward any of these objectives, which I think they're like secondaries that I, for whatever reason, don't have on my list of targets here. The other enemy minefields are over here, but I'm assuming the French are going to clear them before I can get there. All 
right, let's move our artillery forward to uh, support attacking this town next turn. And I think that's everybody. Uh, is there... Let's see here. Supply hub. You can see where the supply hub provides supply. Airfield supply point. So all these guys should still be in supply. I do like the supply um, mechanics in this game. Is there an option, though, for... What can I use these for? Reinforcement. Aviation recon. Airstrike. Okay, so you can call, like, strategic reserves onto the field or something like that. Recon would be interesting. All right, it looks like there's another enemy minefield here, so we can clear that one. Verifying the enemy's location. Okay, so no mines on that main roadway here, but there's some troops stuck out by this airfield. All right, well, let's move forward to the next turn. I think you get up to 20 turns for a major and 25 for a minor, I think. This is the SAR offensive, yes. All right, so those fighters are going to go strafe the French. Some Panzer IVs are hitting the French as well. We didn't really see a lot of German movement outside of their fighters. The French are engaging the German fighters for us, so I'm glad I didn't use my hurricanes against them. Interesting, Lake. I didn't know that. Every core unit deployed takes one command point per turn. Huh. All right. So the German unit there surrendered. The French, I feel like, are having some tough times with that Panzer IV unit on their flank. But I don't really care about that. I'm not the French. What do I care about their casualties? It doesn't matter to me. They're moving far more aggressively than I think the French historically did in the SAR offensive. No, you're right. I did see that lake. I saw the, the points. I didn't really know what I was looking at, but I did see the points earlier. All right. So if you hover over here, command points, a maximum of 25. That means we get an income of 15 per turn because we have 10 deployed core units. So when I buy a unit then, do I choose whether it's core or not? Is it nighttime? Why did it get all weirdly dark? Three-day turn rotation, day-day, night. Got it. Thanks, Light. Okay, I'm assuming that means no air operations, right? At night. To that extent, I'm assuming we might want to withdraw our air force to the airfield. There's a landing option there where they'll get refueled. Also move our tactical bomber back here. And land it to get refueled as well. It was almost out of fuel. Alright, so it is nighttime. We need to demine three more minefields, take one more border objective, and avoid high casualties. Let's bombard these guys. Demine this hex. 
at night too that's nice because during the day you'll remember when we tried to demine a section we actually took casualties from the enemy which fired on us while we were doing it well demining at night less dangerous enemy can't see you as well but I think it's terrible that you can barely tell like I can't tell where my units are this is terrible Right, let's go demine over here. All right, so we just need to demine one more hex. an anti-tank gun I know it's still kind of bad though I get it there's green and yellow numbers that tell me where my units are I guess let's move those infantry up to the right City forest and mountain terrain offer much better protection from enemy attacks. Right click an empty hexagon to learn more about its terrain. What's the red supply? Does that mean a chance for, like, disruption? I know that my tank is one hex away. I'm figuring if they counterattack against my tanks, my tanks are in the open. They're not in close quarter fighting, so I would think they'll be safe there. But I guess we'll see. Easy there, Sean Mac. Oh, I didn't mean to click that button. Oops. That was an accident. That was a dumb move. All right, I think that's everything. I can't really see very well, but I think that's everything for this turn. All right. The enemy is very passive in this battle. I'm presuming that's just because it's the SAR offensive and the Germans are very low on troops. The French seem to be having a tougher time of it than us. But we're back into the air operation, or the day, the daytime phase. Okay, what I wanted to do here, let's go ahead and, I don't, actually, let's bomb. Can we, can our bombers get up there? Yeah, I want to go bomb this enemy artillery. Our aircraft took off. That's the objective there. Then I'm going to bombard the artillery with my own artillery. I'm going to move my infantry up. Your unit has been withdrawn from a supply zone. The delivery of supplies and destroy the enemy stop. artillery here. The supply zone is marked with we'll the move in and take the objective. His forces are now in control of the German border outposts. I have to say the Germans don't seem too eager to resist. Most of their forces are still in the rear. I don't like this. Keep your wits about you. There must be a reason the Germans are stalling. I'm sure they have a cunning plan. 
They should, for their own sake. They must now, have a cunning plan. Now, the airfield in Brightford. Do this, and we'll be able to reinforce you with some aviation. Okay, so we do have to take that other airfield here. Move. As I kind of presumed we would. You can see your objectives kind of evolve through the course of, uh, of the battle. Uh, let's get our fighters up also. Provide some cover for our bombers in the event the Germans do show up. We'll go ahead and strafe these guys. Oops. Okay. I wish my infantry could attack again. Alright. We'll keep pounding that enemy infantry unit here. Let's move our recon forward here and, and demine. Well, there's enemy units up here. We can see that. We don't know what. Let's pull our recon vehicle back. So there's artillery supporting them to the left by this airfield. Nice, so our anti-aircraft guns can apparently also inflict casualties on the enemy, so we'll go take this town. Supply point intact. It can now be used to supply your troops. Move our artillery forward a little bit. There you go. Oh, they didn't quite demine that objective. They demined most of it, but they didn't demine the whole thing. Huh. I got this one tank unit out here on the left flank kind of just wasting its time. The French have already bypassed this infantry unit, interestingly enough. It's probably not the best use of my armored unit there, all by itself. Oh, and my uh, anti-tank gun also acts as artillery, so it did a little bit of damage there. So that enemy infantry unit's almost toast. We'll have to see what's coming down from the north, but presumably there's an enemy counterattack coming. I do like the ability to zoom in and kind of see things in a little bit more detail compared to like what you would normally see in a Panzer Corps type game. You've also got, you know, these anti-tank uh, obstacles, if you will. Sean Mack, thanks for the resub. Nine months in a row. Appreciate the support. HarleyMon93, thanks for the follow. And they gone. thank you for the resub also. All right, so I think that's going to end the turn. Let's see what the Germans do here. There's a little bit of artillery bombardment. Wow, they really hurt that anti-air unit there. Some German fighter units moving around, but not a lot of activity. The French, meanwhile, we'll just fast forward through here. They're attacking on the left flank. I don't really care about any of that. Good work. Credit to our sappers. Oh, I guess we completed the uh, the demining objective. So now we just need to take this airfield for our next objective. Over here. Uh, where's my recon vehicle? Is it well out of range? Kind of. All right, let's do this. Bombard there. I think that destroys that enemy unit. Move our infantry into the town. Oh, there's enemy infantry over here. All right, well, let's go bomb it with our Bristol Blenheims. 
There weren't even any troops left there. We just destroyed them. What about my recon vehicle? What can it do now? Let's get it up over here on the on the right flank of the advance on the airfield. So we detected there's infantry here. Presumably this is artillery. We did get bombarded from there last turn. So go ahead and bombard. Damage is reduced because it's an unidentified target. This anti-aircraft unit is pretty shot up, so I'm actually going to pull it back. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom, a new game which comes out tomorrow uh, by Starney Games, and it's the fourth addition to the Strategic Mind series. You have Strategic Mind Pacific, which looks at the American and Japanese struggle in the Pacific theater. You have Strategic Mind Blitzkrieg, which looks at the German side of the offensives in World War II. And then you have Strategic Mind uh, uh, Specter of Communism, which looks at the Soviet side of things in World War II. And now you have Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom, which looks at the Western Allied campaigns in World War II. It's a really interesting series. It is a Panzer General style game, turn-based, hex-based warfare with core units that carry over battle to battle. Um, but I'm actually kind of enjoying myself here. I think the one thing, and it comes up in the stream several times, the one thing I really wish that they did a better job of is differentiating hexes and units. The map, I understand why they want to do a 3D map. I understand why they want to have bright, vibrant colors, but the units don't stand out enough on the map. And to me, that feels like the game's biggest flaw is a lack of clear design on the map to make units really stand apart. If there's one thing that I would say the Panzer General games do or Panzer Cord games do a much better job of, it's providing a very clear view on the map for where units are and where they're not. And so, you know, even in Panzer Corps 2, which is a 3D game as well, they do a much better job of that. That being said, I think there's a lot going for this game. I actually think the between the battle equipping phase of units where you've got to equip units with different like sub parts of their units like machine guns and artillery and other things like that where you can, you know, upgrade units is much better than anything the Panzer Corps series has because you, you, you upgrade units, but you don't manage sort of like attached elements like sniper squads or um, Vickers machine gun detachments or other things like that. I think that really separates this game from other games like it, uh, as well as the fun voiceover stuff. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this first look, this first impressions of Starney Games' Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom. Uh, let me know your thoughts below if this is something you'd like to see more of. We will have another episode come out tomorrow, the second half of this first episode, which we live streamed on my Twitch channel, uh, will come out tomorrow. Um, but beyond that, let me know if you'd like to see more as we go further into the campaign. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.